All right, this is lesson 72, solids of revolutions, the method of disks. All right, on example one, it says to find the volume of the solid of revolution obtained by revolving the plane of region R bounded by Y is equal to the square root of X, which is this curve right here, the X axis, and the line X is equal to four. So the, that region that's being bounded by those three functions uh, is this right here. Okay, so that's that area. Hopefully you can see it's sort of the shade. Now, what's gonna happen after this, that we're gonna, it says right here, the x axis, the x axis, the line x is equal to four, and we're gonna rotate this around about the x axis. So what we're actually doing here is that we're gonna rotate, we're gonna rotate that, all right? So if you can kind of imagine uh, spinning this, this region, and when you do, it's gonna make something and I'm going to try to make here my best attempt. You know, when you rotate this, it will look something like this. Right, it would basically make, it almost looks like, I don't know, like the tip of a bullet or something like that. So that's what it will look, or look like, right? So we're going to try to find the volume of that. So in order for you to find the volume, if you remember, what we're going to do here is we're going to use what's called the method of disk. Now, the volume of a disk is basically, if you think about it, a disk is a cylinder. So to find the volume of a cylinder or a disk, that would be pi r squared times the height. If you remember, that's the area of the base times the height. Now, we're going to call it this height. In this case, remember that this right here is a disk that's sitting down on its side. So basically, if you could picture this, we're trying to find this disk right here. Right, and this this highlighted part right here, that would be like the side. That would be like the side of this disk. So I guess I should draw it more like that if you want to be correct about this. It would be more like that side. The rest of the thickness if you will. The thickness of that we're gonna call this delta X. All right, so the thickness of each cylinder or disk we're gonna call this delta X. So again the volume of the disk is the uh, the area of the base times the height which in this case we're gonna call this delta X. Alright so I'll write that here that would be the area of the base and that right here times the height. All right, now the reason we're writing the height is, um, or the thickness, if you will, of each cylinder, we're calling this delta x, is because eventually we're gonna be able to uh, basically find the volume of this by putting a bunch of disks in here. And if I put a bunch of disks of different size, I can fill this up and I'll get the volume of that. Okay, so, in order for me to do that, so this is how I get right here what I have written. That would just give me the 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 uh, the volume of this little cylinder, right? So I'm going to find the volume of multiple cylinders, all right? And I, I can get a more accurate volume if I make this delta x smaller and smaller and smaller. Hence the calculus part, all right? So we're going to go between zero and four. Now we're going to go between 0 and 4 because that's where it starts and this area is being bounded by this line which is x is equal to 4. Alright, and then now we're going to have pi. Now the radius, right, the radius here. Think about it, I need the radius of this. Alright, I need the radius. So the radius would be from that point right here to the top of this line. So that would be... Um, the square root of x and that's really it so from here to here to find the height right here if you will the height will be the radius I would just have the square root of x alright at that point I don't know what that point would be but we're talking about general here generalizing and the height would be the x so again this is the radius and this is the height 
Okay. So now if we just kind of work on this on our own, we would have the we can pull the pi out because that's a constant. You know, if we square a square root, we get an x dx. And we can definitely integrate something like this. That would give me a pi. That would be zero. A pi, which is equal to about 25.133. All right, so uh, for now on, I'm not really going to talk about the integrating part by hand. We're just going to do it with a calculator. The hardest part about this is trying to picture what I just drew here. Okay, so again, remember the delta x would be considered the thickness of the cylinder, and the radius is from the middle of this disk to the top of here, which in this case, to find that distance right here, that would be the same thing as the height or the y value at that point on this function, all right, hence the radius. Uh, okay, so let's go to the next one. Hopefully it'll make more sense on the second time around. Now in this one, we're finding the volume of a solid generated by revolving the region bounded by the curve y equals x cubed, all right, which is this function right here, the y-axis, so this axis right here, and the line y is equal to 3, so this line. So that area that's being bounded is this All right so that's that's the region we're playing with and now we're gonna rotate this around the y-axis so we're gonna rotate that like that okay and I'm only gonna rotate the area that's being shaded alright so again you don't have to necessarily draw uh, this detail of a picture I just wanna kinda make sure that you understand what this would be okay that would be that if you rotate it well let me stop right here because we're supposed to stop right there at three. And then you would get that. That looks like that. Okay, so again, that came from that, okay? That came from uh, this area being rotated, this little area being rotated around the y axis. So now. Um, because it is being rotated around the y-axis, okay, instead of using delta x, notice that the disk, they're not going to be sitting up like this, they're actually going to be sitting down uh, more like this. Alright, so I'm going to draw another disk in here. Alright, so each disk is going to be laying down, so therefore, instead of having, and I'm, I'm making this a little thicker so you understand that that's, that's the thickness of the disk, and that we would call delta y. All right, so we're going to call that delta y. All right, if that's delta y, okay, you notice that if this is delta y, to find the, the volume of a cylinder, one more time, we would have the volume of the disk or a cylinder, which is the same thing, is equal to pi r squared times the height. In this case, the height or the thickness of the cylinder is delta y. All right, so again, this would be the area of the base again. And you don't necessarily have to go through this every single time, but I, I wanted to do it at least a couple of times so you see where the formula comes from. And it, hopefully it'll make more sense so you don't have to memorize it. All right, so that's the height, that's the area of the base. Now, before we go on, because we're going to have everything in terms of y because of this height, all right, I'm going to go ahead and solve for, uh, solve for x. So that would give me, so right here, so we have y is equal to x cubed, which implies that I would have uh, x is equal to the cube root of y, which is equal to y to the one third power. Okay, so just keep that in mind that I'm going to call this line right here this line is the same thing as y to the y, is, y to the one third power okay all right so now because of that all right notice that the volume of that if the volume of this one disk alone just a one disk is equal to pi now the hard part is the radius but remember that the radius would be basically from the middle of this disk up to this curve right here now that right there would be equal to x cubed, or sorry, in this case, since I'm using y, be y to the one-third. So the radius is y to the one-third power. And I'm going to square this only because of the formula. Remember that 
I'm supposed to square the radius, so that's the radius right here, times the height, and that will give me the volume of only one little disc in here, or cylinder, right? So that would give me the volume of this little cylinder. Now, if I want to find the volume of this shape completely, then I'm going to integrate between 0 and 3, all right, between here, which is um, y is equal to 0, and this would be y is equal to 3, all right? So those are my boundaries. When I want to use delta y, I have to go from the bottom to the top, okay? So that would be that, and I would integrate basically the same formula that I have up here. It's exactly the same. All right, I'm going to write it like that. And instead of delta y, because remember what we're doing is we're going to make this disk thinner and thinner and thinner so where it fits exactly inside of here. And it will fill out the whole thing and it give me the exact volume. All right, so that would be dy. Okay, and um, if you want to simplify that a little more, we would have pi of y to the two-thirds dy, right? And we can, again, we can integrate that relatively easily. Um, so I will, but if you want to do this part on the calculator, you can. Add one, divide by the same, so we got three-fifths y to the five-thirds. We're going to integrate between 0 and 3. Okay, we're going to evaluate that, I'm sorry. So when you get the answer, the answer would be 11.763. And let's try to round our stuff to three decimal points. And uh, I guess technically that would be units cubed since you just find a volume. All right, so hopefully that's making a little more sense. Um, on the back page, by the way, they're, they're drawing the same shapes, at least for the first one. That would be the example one shape in case you can't picture it, in case my picture was not enough. That's how you do that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead now. Not all the time, by the way, are you going to be able to uh, draw this detail of a picture, all right? Like on the next one is actually a little bit more difficult to do that. So this is the, the area that's being bounded. All right, so find the volume of the solid form by revolving the region bounded by 2 minus x squared, which is that, and g of x is equal to 1, which is this, about the line y is equal to 1. So it's actually on this one, this line right here is, well, let's talk about the region first, I'm sorry. It's being, the area that's being bounded is this. And I want to rotate that around the same boundary right here. Okay, so if you bound that, notice that that would look more like a... And you definitely don't have to do this, all right? I just do this so that hopefully you are able to see what's going on, but you don't have to do that. All right, so that's what that will look like. We're going to have to use... Oh, this is a little weird. All right, now I'm just doing the, the thickness of one disk. Uh, that would be one disk right there. That looks terrible, but um, I'm not really sure. This, it could be a complete perfect sphere. I don't know, but just because it, I, the way that I drew it, it looks like this. Okay, so again, remember that this would be, this would be the thickness, what we call delta x. And again, I'm not going to draw the de detail of a picture because... As we go on, you'll realize that you can't, all right? It would take too much time, and it's a little bit confusing. Okay, so that, that cylinder right there, or that disk, to find the volume again. And I'll do it one more time. Again, you don't have to do this every single time you're doing a problem, but the volume of disk, one more time, would be pi r square, in this case, times the delta x, right? So that would be the area of the base, in this case, the area of that disk right there. And delta x would be the height of the disk or the cylinder or the thickness of it. All right, so hopefully you understand that. So if you understand that, the only problem that you have to do, the only problem you have to deal with that would be considered difficult is to try to find the radius, all right? So I'm going to try to find the radius right here. So that's what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find that distance. Hopefully you can see that. All right, and if I'm trying to find that distance, all right, so this is going to be a little bit different because the other one started right on the x-axis or the y-axis, but on this one, to find the radius, all right, so I'm going to write it down here. The radius would be equal 
the top curve minus the bottom curve. And this is similar to the stuff we have done already. Okay, so again, uh, that if I just write the top curve, which would be 2 minus x squared, all right, that will basically give me from here all the way to here. It'll give me that height. I don't want that much height. I just need that little piece. So if I have that height right here, which is 2 minus x squared, that'll give me that height. And if I subtract this other one, this y is equal to 1, right? So basically, if I have all of this and I subtract this, I get that little piece. And that's what that's saying, okay? So the radius is going to be equal to that. And if I simplify, the radius is now going to be 1 minus x squared. All right, so hopefully you understood that again. In general, I guess if you don't understand it, it's always going to work out the same. Anytime you're looking for the radius, you really always have the tough top curve minus the bottom curve. It just happened to be that in example 1 and 2, the bottom curve was 0. Right, so that's why you don't have to deal with it. All right, so one more time. To find uh, this, will, this is going to give me right, the volume of that disk, of that one disk, the only one that I have here, is equal to pi, and instead of r, I'm going to have 1 minus x squared, square. remember that this is the radius, this is the radius, okay? Uh, let's see, square dx, oh sorry, not dx yet, delta x, and remember that delta x is the height or the thickness of this disk, all right? Now to find again, to find the volume, one more time, we were, we're going to make the, the thickness of the cylinder smaller and smaller and smaller and use multiple cylinders to fill this shape up and when we fill it up we find the exact volume so the volume of the disk would be equal to uh, pi and you just have to have the boundaries in this case this is not too bad um, uh, let's see where I'm at oh yeah sorry I got kinda got lost with this curve that I made up uh, this point right here and that point right there Okay, that's actually going to be uh, 1, 1. And if you don't know that, you can either you can graph it in your calculator and find the intersection. And if not, you can uh, set that equal to 1. Set this equal to 1. Let's see if that's true. I'm thinking of whether it's true or not. Yeah. So if you do that, you'll get this point right here. So that would give me like a negative 1, 1. And that will give me a 1, 1 here. Right, and that's going to give me my boundaries. The x coordinates are going to give me my boundaries. So we have negative 1, 1, 1 minus x squared square dx. Remember that dx basically means that you took the thickness of the cylinders and made it very, very small. Okay, now if you do that right there, and if you plug that in your calculator, which I'm completely fine with it, then the answer that that's going to give you is 3.2. Three, five, one. Okay. Now that I have done all this in general, if we're looking at this in general, to find the volume, by the disk method. So this is your general formula. I just don't want to give you that because then it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, so the volume of a disk uh, would be equal to pi integral between the first boundary and the second boundary of r squared dx. And remember, the hard part for most of you guys is trying to find that radius. Okay. Now that is if you're taking the the cylinder. Sorry, if the disk is like this, basically. Right, if it's like this, then you're gonna use that. Okay, where this is, this would be delta x. All right, the thickness would be delta x. Now the other one would be, or the volume of the disk can also be pi 
uh, basically the same formula, except for instead of x's, you have y's. And that would be for uh, cylinders that look like, uh, you know, like this. So if they look like that, So if they look like this, and you would use that formula. Okay, so the, that would be delta y. Okay, so the steps, again, and if you already got it, you can just, you know, put me on pause and never come back. So the steps are, is the delta x or delta y, that's, that's your first step. So you need to realize, you need to, um, you need to decide whether the disks are going to be like this or like this. That's basically what we're asking. And the number two, you're going to find the radius, and I think that's the hardest part. Find radius and area for the disk. And finally, number three is to find the bounds, the boundaries. All right, so again, and that could be hard, but if you have a calculator, you can definitely just look and see where it intersects, and they shouldn't be too terribly hard for you. All right, I know this is hard. It's hard to picture. Hopefully, you kind of get an idea of what to do. If you got any questions, please ask.